बसमीम् अलकुम द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ स्पीच साउंड आर्टिकुलर्स अब द लर्निक्स ऑल द साउंड्स वी मेक वैन वी स्पीक आर द रिजल्ट ऑफ मसल्स कॉन्ट्रैक्टिंग द मसल्स इन द चेस्ट दैट वी यूज फॉर ब्रीथिंग प्रोड्यूस्ड द फ्लो ऑफ एयर दैट इज नीडेड फॉर ऑलमोस्ट ऑल स्पीच साउंड्स muscles in the larynx produce many different modification in the flow of air from the chest to the mouth after passing through the larynx the air goes through what we call the vocal tract which end at the mouth and nose trills here the air from the lungs escape into the atmosphere we have a large and complex set of muscles that can produce changes in the shape of the vocal tract and in order to learn how the sound of speech are produced it is necessary to become familiar with the different parts of vocal tract these different parts are called articulators and the study of them is called articulatory phonetics figure 1 is a diagram that is used frequently in the study of phonetics it represent the human head seen from the side This plate is though it had been cut in half you will need to look at it carefully as the articulators are described and you will often found it useful to have a mirror and a good light placed so that you can look at the inside of your mouth so this is the diagram nose upper lip lower lip tongue lower teeth these are the lower teeth alveolar right this is hard palate soft palate phrenics larynx the phrenix is a tube which begins just above the larynx it is about 7 cm long in women and about 8 cm long in men it it stop and it is divided into two one part begun the back of the mouth and the other part beginning of the way through the nasal cavity if you look in your mirror with your mouth open you can see the back of the phrenix the velum or soft palate is seen in the diagram in the position that allows to the velum or soft palate is seen in the diagram in a position that allows air to pass through the nose and through the mouth yours is probably in that position now but often in speech it is raised so that air can not escape through the nose the other important thing about the velum is that it is one of the articulator that can be touched by the tongue when we make the sound k and g the tongue is in contact with the lower side of the velum and we call these velars consonants the hard palate is often called the roof of the mouth you can feel its smooth curved surface with your tongue the alveolar right is between the top front teeth and the hard palate you can feel its shape and with your tongue its surface is really much rougher than it feels and is covered with the literal right you can only see these if you have a mirror small enough to go inside your mouth such are as those used by dentist sound made with the tongue touching here such as t and t are called alveolar the tongue is of course a very important articular and it can be moved into many different places and different shapes it is usual to divide the tongue into different parts so there are no clear dividing lines within the tongue figure number 2 shows the tongue in a larger scale with these parts shown tip plate front and root this use of the word front often seem rather strange at first the teeth upper and lower are usually shown in diagram like figure 
only at the front of the mouth immediately behind the lips this is for the shake of a simple diagram and you should remember that most speakers have teeth to the side of their mouth back almost to the soft palate the tongue is in contact with the upper side teeth for many speech sounds sounds made with the tongue touching the front teeth are called dentals okay this is the figure number 2 and it is the tongue so this side is the tip of the tongue blade front beak and root number 7 the lips are more important in speech they can be pressed together when we produce the sound p and b brought into contact with the teeth as in f and b or rounded to produce the lip shape for vowel like u sound in wet lips are contract which each other are called bilabial while those with lips to teeth contract are called labiodental the seven articulators described above are main ones used in speech but there are three other things to remember firstly the larynx which will be the studied in chapter 4 could also be described as an articulator are very complex and independent one secondly the jaw are sometimes called articulators certainly we move the lower jaw a lot in speaking but the jaw are not articulator in a same way as the other because they cannot themselves make contact with other articulator finally also there is practically nothing that can we do with the nose and the nasal cavity they are a very important part of our equipment for making sounds what is sometimes called our vocal apparatus particularly nasal consonants such as m mm, n mm. again we cannot really describe the nose and the nasal cavity as articulator in the same sense as 1 to 8 above